How's it going, my astute gamers out there? I know how everyone's hyped behind the Jin Yuan banner coming out pretty soon, and everyone wants to know a little bit more about their lovely Cloud Knight General, so I thought that I'd give you a bit of a rundown of his entire lore history from his very birth to what we know now. I'm just gonna tell you some of the cool things that he did and and leave out all the filler where it's just him talking to nobody or it's just them describing that people live a long time. But before I continue, I have to add that most of this information was taken from the beta, so some of it might be subject to change, but probably not. Anyway, now let's continue. When Jing Yuan was born, there was a Foxian custom to have babies pick their future. For that to happen, they would set various objects around the child, and whichever one the child grabbed would be their future. Jin Yuan's parents hoped that he would be a scholar, or at least an official at the Realm Keeping Commission. It was to their surprise when the child grabbed the sword. Skipping forward a little bit, Jing Yuan became the apprentice of the previous swordmaster of the Law Fu, Jing Lue. After graduating the academy, he joined the Cloud Knights in order to escape the boredom of life and also his parents' teachings. His first expedition takes place aboard the Novice Ostriger, a warship carrying various Cloud Knight troops. At one point, the ship had to make a forced landing upon an ocean planet due to technical difficulties. This planet is where they met another long-life species, a species of jellyfish that can control the minds of their host. These jellyfish nearly converted the entire warship into an alien hive. It was through Jing Yuan's quick thinking that they were able to avoid catastrophe. This bloodless victory showed Jing Yuan's skills to the Cloud Knight's generals. After returning to the Xin Zhao, he was appointed to a position of importance in the Knights. After a few more demonstrations of his skills, he was invited by his master to join her team, and so began the legend of the High Cloud Quintet. The High Cloud Quintet is the most famous legend in all of Xin Zhao history. This group was known for many things one of which being defeating a living planet known as Ketu Mirage. Though they were known for their greatness, it only took a mere 100 years for them to fall, and their fall was known for nothing more than the act of time. I'm going to be taking this next part directly from his character story part 4, because I believe it tells very closely of how Jing Yuan's life has gone throughout the years. Fallen generals don't have to endure such torment, but those who survive have to go through it all, no matter how great a vision one has dreamed of and no matter how many overwhelming enemies one has defeated, time will always reduce one's strength little by little, yet cruelly sparing one's life, leaving one cowering in a corner and hating one's own powerlessness. Only the truly wise can stand proud in front of the undefeated enemy called time. We don't know whether or not this was the start of the High Cloud Quintet's fall, or if this was just another reason behind its fall, but during this time, Jing Yuan's master became Marastruck, so, through a heavy heart, he had to kill his own master. Skipping forward nearly a hundred years, we can see Jing Yuan with Yang Jing, who rose to fame during the tournament hosted by the Seat of Divine Foresight, and had now taken the role of Cloud Knight Lieutenant. Though they are part of the long life species, due to the bloody nature of warfare, Jing Yuan is one of the few generals who have passed the century mark. It is through Jin Yuan's careful management that the Xian Zhao have lived through many years of peace. It is because of this long period of peace that Jin Yuan has picked up the nickname Dozing General. During this part of the video, I'm going to get a little bit of wacky inflatable arm pulling tube man on you because I'm going to be depicting a conversation between Jin Yuan and the Master Diviner. And for me to do that, I need to put on a lady voice. So I'm terrible at those, you know, so here we go. The story starts as this. First, we have Jin Yuan. Master Diviner, why do we use a square board but round pieces for star chess? Perhaps it's based around the round sky and square earth. Ancient civilizations believed the earth was flat. This set is modeled around the old days of nation states and imperial conquest over a singular planet, so naturally it's square. As for the pieces, people back then believed the sky was a round dome, and chess pieces spun around like stars in that dome to reflect in human lives. That's why they are also round. No, no, that's incorrect. I've already predicted your next 48 moves. Jin Yuan, if you want to distract me with questions, I urge you to stop. Uh, 
How could you suspect such malice? Don't interrupt me. Keep talking. It's true that chess is a metaphor and describes the human condition. The rules of war are clearly established with each piece's actions fixed. Advance, retreat, and jump. Advance or retreat is always in an orderly manner, which is why the board squares in its orderliness. As for the pieces, the sages said, use intellect with subtlety and suaveness. As each piece is meant to be the sentient individuals, they are therefore circular. The origins of starchiness are covered in the gleaned pearls of Vidir. I've read lots, Jinyuan. Why are you brazenly lying to me? Cloud Knights moves to C3, taking your king. You lost, Lady Fu. Hang on! How did I not see that in my predictions? B -b back up! Let me see that move again! Chess pieces are like people. Each has its own sentience. There's no going back on the chess board. How can anyone return to the past? <laughs> How can the head of commission act like such a sore loser? And that's all the important lore we have on Jinyuan. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope all of you get him if y'all are wanting him. And uh, nine years from now, I hope you get the Kafka when she drops. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And as always, Johnny.